Scotland if you think you're a girl, it means you're engaged. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, moving swiftly along, shall we get our next act on? Yeah. Hey. Microphone far too far away. Okay, so uh, good afternoon. My name is Robbie Cooper, and I'm feeling quite relaxed, feeling quite calm. Um, but if I were you sitting there watching me telling you that I'm feeling relaxed and calm, given the situation we all find ourselves in, where you're just st staring at me, a bunch of strangers, expecting me to make you laugh, I'd probably think that I was either a liar or maybe on drugs, or maybe a psychopath. <laughs> well, it turns out that I'm actually a psychologist. Um, <laughs> do we have any psychologists in the house tonight? Woo-woo! <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, we do, there's a connection there. And of course, the most famous psychologist is... Freud. Freud, yes, that's the right answer. <laughs> Freud, Freud was particularly interested in the innermost dark workings of the mind, the really dark, dark stuff. And uh, especially in children, actually, as it happens. Now, coincidentally, <laughs> coincidentally, I got first interested in psychology at, at the tender age of five, when I first realized how easy it was to make my sister cry. <laughs> <laughs> All I had to do was kill dad. <laughs> And have sex with mum. <laughs> For those of you not versed in, in basic psychology, of course, that was a reference. <laughs> that, that was a reference there to Freud's notion of the Oedipus complex, <laughs> which he described as the child's unconscious. Uh, all children, uh, all, all male children, have the unconscious desire to sexually uh, possess their mother and kill their father. Um, and that's one of Freud's many writings on the human psyche, uh, which modern experimental psychologists like myself would file under fiction slash fantasy with erotic content. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, he did have a good sort of sense of what disturbs people. I mean, it's true to say there are a few things le more disturbing than witnessing your brother, your sexually immature brother, have sex with your, your mutual parent, your mother. <laughs> Having just witnessed the death of your father at your brother's hands, as you both wipe away the tears and your father stares back with dead eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to share these things with, <laughs> in a group. So, um, this is actually my second time performing stand-up comedy. Did anyone see my last yeah. attempt? <laughs> so, five people. <laughs> five live people. So, in, in that show, uh, what I did was try to give you a detailed account of the psychological mechanisms involved in a scenario where um, a man's face was found inside another man's testicle. How, how, how would that even be possible? <laughs> Now that's, that's, that's another show, another day, but as an academic, I, I had very mixed feelings about that show. Uh, on, the, on one hand, I was happy that it, it had you know, gone ahead, people seemed to like the idea of testicles, it was quite fun. <laughs> but, as I said, as an academic, I was quite disappointed in myself, so moderately ashamed that I'd chosen testicles as the subject of my first stand-up <laughs> comedy show. And, you know, it's really to do with the kind of laughter that you get. Um, there's really no, you, know, you can say the word testicles and people will laugh, but there's not really effort involved. <laughs> if, if, anything, if anything, in comedic terms, uh, the, the choice of the subject of testicles could be regarded as low-hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, so, uh, you know, I, as I said, I have mixed feelings about the show, and as you just experienced, any, any sort of joke 
involving testicles, you sort of spontaneously laugh, almost like you're convulsing somehow. But, you know, but, but there really is nothing satisfying about that from an academic point of view. You've not really done any work, I've just said some words about testicles, and you've gone, oh. and it, it, we all go home and it's fantastic. Uh, now, my, my, my concerns about the calibre of the show were shared in the, the only review that exists. This appeared in the Edinburgh Evening News and was written by a man known only to me as Angus MacDonald. Now, is Angus here today? No, it's good, good, good. Um, and uh, Angus uh, didn't seem to like the show very much. Um, but I, as an academic, I'm used to giving people feedback. I think it's important to look at feedback in a constructive way. That way, we can all move forward, we can learn from our mistakes, and we can make sure we don't make those same mistakes again. So in the process, in the sort of spirit of being open and honest about the feedback that I've received and trying to move forward, what I'm going to do for you now is read out that review and see if we can come to some sort of agreement on what kind of show we had. <laughs> in, order, in order to facilitate this process, to help you get into the mind of Angus MacDonald, what I'm going to have to do is employ various parts of my brain that would be normally reserved for those in the acting profession. <laughs> and in me, they're, they're quite underdeveloped. So, just give me a second to, to get into character. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, even though I'm from Scotland, I'm not that good at doing a good Scottish accent. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Angus MacDonald, review of my last show. Edinburgh Evening News. <clears throat> Speaking of dildos, first up was Robbie Cooper. Before we go any further, just to give you some sort of context, speaking of, he hadn't been spe speaking about dildos, that was just an insult. <laughs> Nonetheless, speaking of dildos, first up was Robbie Cooper. That's me. <laughs> the dildo. The only thing truly funny about this man was his appearance. <laughs> While it is true to say the audience seemed to be having a ball in response to Robbie Cooper's... <laughs> yeah, you can laugh. Uh, seemed to be having a ball, that, that was inverted commas, um, in response to Robbie Cooper's account of the man with a face in his testicle, any hopes of seeing some highbrow comedy tonight were dashed by the fact that Robbie Cooper seemed to rely on the repeated use of the word scrotum to generate laughter. One star. I mean, for any comedian that's a bad review. But for an academic, it's a damning critique. Um, it implies that the laughter evoked by my set was not generated by me, or by my witticisms, or my showmanship, or my good timing, but just by the reflex action or any time the brain entertains thoughts of genitalia. <laughs> Very poor. And of course, at first, I was quite furious. And despite the fact that I realized that the man had a point. You know, sure, I, I'd spent eight minutes talking about testicles. Um, I, I, knew, I knew I had to come back with a damning critique of my own, both of the review and the author of the review. <laughs> <laughs> and in the process of my research, I found out the one fact that I knew was going to be damning. Angus MacDonald got 2-1 for his degree. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> McDonald doesn't actually exist. <laughs> but, 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 but there's a point here. A couple of days later, a couple of days later, I watched I watched a, a, a video, a recording of the show, and sure enough, uh, what I saw surprised even me. Uh, people are laughing. People are you know having a great time, but in response to the word scrotum, there was a 20 percent 
increase in laughter <laughs> compared to all other laughter listing stimuli. <laughs> And for someone who's interested in human behavior, as I am, then the question is why? What is it about the word scrotum <laughs> that can just spontaneously generate laughter? What, why, why do we find the, the word scrotum in any way amusing? And, uh, well, I looked into this. <laughs> I went to the library read some academic papers, and all the, all the findings pointed to one conclusion. It turns out that the scrotum is a, a pouch of wrinkly skin that holds the testicles. 